that uh, Jerry Spino said that Altice is having some issue with their audio on channel 79. That's creating static and other audio issues. So I would uh, recommend any Altice customers to live stream today's uh, government meeting by going to fairfieldct.org backslash fair TV. Uh, so I'm going to call the meeting to order if everyone could rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Uh, item number three, to consider and act upon the minutes of December 6th and December 7th, 2021. Do I have a motion to approve? I will move it. Second. Any discussion or questions? No. All no. in favor? Aye. 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 Hey, Our next uh, item uh, is for information purposes only. Um, it's uh, for resignations to the Conservation Com Commission. Jennifer Hahu um, is resigned. She resigned on December eighth, and Charles Rowan, um, uh, excuse me, resigned on January first. So I just wanted to acknowledge that and let um, everyone know. And I do want to thank them both uh, for their service on the commission uh, and Jennifer stepped up during a difficult time for the conservation commission when, um, you know, we had a massive disruption and um, we lost our conservation director and she um, was really quite wonderful stepping into the chairman's role um, and uh, helping us through the process of choosing our new conservation director, which was very um, detailed and took a lot of effort and time. So I do want to publicly acknowledge acknowledge Jennifer's efforts and, and, um, and dedication to that process. And this past year has been really hard. So uh, kudos to Jennifer. And I'll open it up for if anybody would like to make any comments. I just as well like to thank them for their service in particular call out Jennifer for, as you said, the, the work that was done uh, when she had to step into the breach there. That's uh, never fun and, and they did their work admirably. And I'll echo that. Thank you. Thank you both. Thank you. Um, our next item, um, and I'm going to, before we start, um, this is appointments. And um, uh, it was brought to my attention that, and I believe uh, it was brought to all of our attention on the board regarding um, changing the terms of our newly formed Commission on Disabilities. And um, I, I don't, uh, Tom and Nancy, did you both see that email? I did. I, so, I did. I... Right. So I, um, we could amend, we could consider amendment, uh, to make a change to the charge of the terms file, which would stagger the terms from uh, four, three and two and have all the terms begin in November, like our regularly scheduled, um, commissions do, although it puts a lot of pressure around here in November, <laughs> or we could just do it for January like they're starting now. I think it's worth just clarifying um, for those that this may not make sense to. Do you, do you just want to explain in a sentence or two what that the background of this is? Right. So we established this new commission, and um, I guess we just put them all at the same amount of time. So their terms begin the same and their terms end the same. And it was brought to our attention that it may be uh, better to stagger them so that we always have, you know, someone in case someone wants to not be reappointed. We have people staying on who have some breadth of knowledge and historical perspective. Is, Go ahead, is Julie. it worth? Oh, sorry. It's just by a little bit more with this is that um, it's a temporary commission it's a, set up for three years so the thought was to have it everybody serve for the three years and then and the whole as the commission um, grows and and proves the need to have a permanent commission then those the the next round would be appointments that were staggered oh okay you know what that's a fair point I'm sorry I, I was so busy today I didn't really have a chance to um 
take a deep dive into this. Um, that's right. Say it again, Julie, if you wouldn't mind. It, oh, I don't mind a bit. So it's the, um, the so the commission is new. It's appointed for a three year period, a temporary commission. And the hope is that as the commission starts working on issues and learning more about um, continuing the support for people with disabilities that the town's already established, that the need for a permanent position, I mean, a permanent commission will be established and then the commission will work on making their commission permanent. So right now this is just a temporary three year commission that we're hoping grows into permanent. Yeah, that's actually that's very fair. It's kind of what I thought. Um, so I don't think there's any amendment that's needed here. Right. And I do right. like the, by the way, I do like the idea of, of not doing them all in November, Brenda, just for, as you said, the amount of time it takes to fill those positions, not only to just go through it at our meeting, but everything the administration has to do to go through and sort it down. You know, I maybe that's something you can have the Charter Revision Commission look at. <laughs> to mm -hmm. be Actually, you know, it's fair because, I mean, people don't realize we have 300 people volunteering on various boards and commissions, and it is a tremendous amount of work, you know, deciding who, figuring out who's up and who's applied all of these different things um, that come into play and it does take up a lot of time. So I I would prefer to keep it as it is. We have it, it starting the, the term now. And as Julie just mentioned, it is just a three year term. And then at some point in time, we may, uh, may uh, move to, the board may move to make this a permanent commission. So if that's all right with yeah. uh, both of you. Sounds, yeah. Okay. So I'm just gonna go ahead then. Um, with the way we have it on the agenda. So um, can I get a motion to hear and consider and act upon the following appointments to the Fairfield Commission on Disabilities? Uh, Alder Crocker uh, from Carolyn Drive, term 122 to 125. Uh, Patricia Donahue, Congress Street um, from- Can I again, wave to read the addresses the, and the okay. things and maybe just list all their names and we can go gotcha. over there. I Thank can make you. that motion. Sure. Seconded. All in, uh, all in favor. Aye. 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 Very good. Certainly, uh, I would love to hear everybody's name mentioned and acknowledge yes. each person. Yes, gonna say I everyone's didn't... name for sure. Uh, Shannon Goodchild, who I actually went to elementary, middle, and high school with. Um, <laughs> Adrian uh, Adriana Hoffman, uh, Ronald Ronald Piccolo, Karen Roseman, and Danielle Van Horn. So we have a motion and a second. Um, I know we have, I believe most people are on, uh, I think Sean and uh, Shannon may have had a doctor's appointment, um, but uh, is that, is, is Patri uh, or first, is Alder uh, on the line? I'm, all, I'm on the telephone, yes, Brenda. Uh, hi, Alder, how are you? I'm great, thank you. How are you all today? We're good, thanks uh, so much for joining us. Um, I'm going to open it up. Open it up. Uh, do we have Patricia on the line? Hi, Patricia. Hi. Hi how are you? I'm Patty, actually. But oh, okay. Very good. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Um, is Adriana on the line? Hi, I'm Adrian. Nice to meet Hi. you all. Hi, Adrian. Sorry, I mispronounced your name. Uh, welcome. Thank you. And uh, Ronald. Yep, Ron. I'm here. Hi, Hello, Ron. Everyone. How are you? I'm well, thanks. Karen? And Daniel? Oh, hi, Karen. Hey, everyone. <laughs> and I'm not sure if Shannon was able to join us. Um, I don't see her. So I just want to thank you all for stepping up for this important commission. Um, we did actually have a lot of interest in this, so that's really great. Um, and I appreciate you taking um, the time and, and dedication to serve our community. And I'm just going to open it up to the Board of Selectmen for any questions or comments. Hi, Oh, well, thank you. And thank you to all of you for serving in this really important way. And um, well, I only have the pleasure of knowing Patty peripherally. I've seen the incredible work she's done for the community, for um, her family and for all the families 
of Fairfield. And it's just tremendous and it's great. Patty, thank you for, for stepping in in this sort of more official way, although you've done a lot officially, um, but to serve in this capacity and to all of you, just thank you so much. It's it's always a lot to, to take on. So um, just appreciative and grateful and and thank you all and happy new year. Happy new year. Happy new year. Thank you. Happy New Year to you, too. I just want to wish you all the, the best of luck. It's an important commission. Uh, obviously, you get to set the rules of the road as you go about putting this together, working with Julie and her team. Um, obviously, there's, there's needs in town, and we look forward to working closely with you and hearing your reports and seeing your progress. So I uh, thank you for stepping up in an official capacity for the town. Happy New Year and, and best of luck. And just please keep us informed as you move forward. Absolutely. I, I guess, Thank too, you. If it, sorry if I could just add, too, because, Tom, the way you know you said that made me just want to echo what you're saying here and just to please consider me an ally in your efforts. I, you know, you will be setting the rules of the road and just happy to be supportive in any way. Good to know. Well, thank you all for, um, again, stepping up and for being here today. And of course, my door is always open, my phone line. Anytime you have a question or if there's anything I can do uh, to help you, if you have anything that you need from me or the town, please feel free to reach out. Julie is awesome, so I'm sure she will be able to handle most of that. Um, she, is a, she is a jack of all trades. <laughs> no pressure, um, Julie. No pressure, Julie. <laughs> well, um, if we have no further comment, all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. Congratulations and thanks again. And I will tell you what I told, tell all um, people uh, who come on for appointments. You're free to stay, but you're welcome to leave too. <laughs> it's up to you. <laughs> <clears throat> Thank you, everyone. Sometimes, everybody. sometimes yep. our meetings are very long, so people really want to dash off. <laughs> thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. You. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Appreciate you too. Uh, item number seven is, um, I'm sorry, excuse me, item number six. Uh, this is a first select woman appointment, so there is no vote to be taken here. However, I do want to announce um, that I am appointing uh, Jim Brown, former Board of Finance, former Chairman of the Board of Finance, member to replace Scott Pollock uh, on the um, uh, Employee Retirement Board. And this item does require RTM approval, and we are very lucky that uh, to see Mr. Brown has uh, joined us. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, Jim. It's good to see you. So um, I know there's not a vote, but I will open it up to the board if you have any um, comments or questions. It's a good thing there's no vote. Boy, he's going to squeak through. <laughs> <laughs> um, Jim, thanks for stepping up again. Uh, really appreciate it. You obviously know the importance of the board, um, given the, your work as the on the board of finance with oversight of this board, um, and working collaboratively with them through the 12 years you were on the board of finance. So, uh, best of luck and and a happy new year to you and your family. Thanks, Tom, and you too. Happy new year, and I I appreciate that. Appreciate your support. <laughs> And extra thank you because you actually know the incredible work that goes into this this board, having experienced it from from a different purview. And I just think it's great that you're willing to step in and keep going. So thank you for that. And uh, you know, best to you and happy new year. Yeah, uh, thank you, Nancy, and, and and Brenda. Thank you for the consideration. I, I appreciate it. And it. Just a recent retiree of the Board of Finance. I, I decided I still want to serve the town in some capacity. And this is an excellent board um, that, as you said, Nancy and, and Tom, it does some very important work for us, um, managing and, and working with, whether it's Vanguard and the actuaries on the uh, retiree benefits, both pension and OPEB, town employees and police and fire, and, uh, and the board of it as well on the OPEB side. So, I mean, on the, um, and, and the pension side as well. So the non-certified uh, employees that is. So anyway, yes, as being on the board of finance for 12 years, <coughs> I started thinking about this. There was 50 updates that I received from the chair of the JRIB and plus it's a large part of our budget. So I look forward to joining this board 
and working with the um, with the other members. Well, thank you, Jim. And um, you know, Jim said to me after he um, his term expired uh, on the board of finance. He said, you know, I still want to be involved. I, I love serving the town. And if you see something come up that you think would be a good fit for me, keep me in mind. And when this did come up, I couldn't think of anybody more uh, qualified and experienced to step up and serve. And of course, we all know Jim and we know he does a very good job and he dedicates himself 100%. So I, I'm very grateful that you accepted and I look forward to working with you again. Yeah, same here, Brenda. Thank you. All right. Well, um, again, this is not a voting item. And uh, thank you for being here, though, Jim. Uh, it's nice to see you. Good afternoon. All right. Well, you're welcome to stay, but you're free to leave. <laughs> I'll watch it later on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good answer there, Mr. Brown. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Take care, Jim. I'm telling sure, Brenda, what a good time we are. <laughs> yes, it's true. It's on, true. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Jim. All right. So uh, our next item is item number seven. Um, Holland Hill uh, Elementary School Building Committee to hear a final project summary from the Holland Hill uh, Elementary School Building Committee on the upgrading and renovation of the school and to hear and consider and act upon the disbandment of the Holland Hill Building Committee. And I will turn this over to Mr. Lee. How are you? Happy good, good to everyone. see you. You too. You Two too. days in a row. <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for uh, allowing me to come on today. Um, I am proud to announce that the Holland Hill building hat, uh, job is completed. Um, yeah. To give you a quick highlight of it, we, we uh, did expand and put in new classrooms uh, to Holland Hill, which eliminated the relocatable classrooms. They're no longer on site. Uh, we did bring the facility up to current and fire code requirement uh, with ins installation of a new uh, fire sprinkler system throughout the facility. The school now has capacity of 504. And with that being said, we also installed a new HVAC system, fresh air and air conditioning system throughout the facility. Uh, we did uh, did security upgrades and, and put in uh, expansion, north parking lot, new electrical, uh, fire and gas lines, and new cafeteria and serving lines, and new furniture were installed in the, the new classroom wing. And I would be happy to give everyone a, a tour of the new facility too. Um, you just let me know when, and uh, I still have the keys for right now. <laughs> Um, okay, well, thank, thank you, Jason, and I'm sure we all, each of us would love to do that at some point, um, and we will let you know and reach out to you. I'm going to open it up to the board for any questions or comments. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'll have a couple, if I don't mind. <clears throat> Jason, was there anything in the, uh, can you just give us the, the Reader's Digest view of the financials of this, where it came in, all that kind of mm -hmm. stuff, and, th and then I got a couple of follow-ups. We, we were fortunate enough, uh, we, we got this project done before the uh, COVID pandemic hit. Um, we are going to planning on returning approximately 115,000 back <coughs> to town. Uh, we did come in under budget with completion of everything that was on the uh, initial charge and on the list. So, so is that it, that's great news. Has has the Board of Education kind of accepted the building as it were? It has. We we uh, went in front of them uh, a few months ago. We just couldn't get on your agenda. We withheld final payment to a contractor because the HVAC system in the gymnasium was not working properly. Um, that problem has been fixed. Everything is online. The town actually has taken uh control of the building right uh last thing this was the building committee one of the last ones um mr quinn was the chairman of correct For mr uh quinn was chairman and mr harry ackley were both members of this committee um, yeah so I, I i would definitely have to know i'm, I'm not in this position uh, as chairman being as prepared especially i'm on the uh, chairman of another building committee uh, without his mentorship if you want to call it that 
um, yeah. Tim and Mr. Ackley were, were big contributors for this project. Yeah, I think, um, and big contributors to the town as well. Uh, Madam First Select Women, I just think it might be appropriate, it, you know, for this school, and apologies, I'm, I'm springing this now just as I go through this. Maybe, maybe we do something to, to recognize those two gentlemen who helped bring this school to completion. I know the building committees themselves get recognized at the, you know, with a plaque at the school, but maybe these two gentlemen um, who did so much for the town, particularly Mr. Quinn, um, I mean, Mr. Ackley's done everything for the town, but M Mr. Quinn, as it relates to building committees, chaired so many of them and did so many, uh, so much for the students of the town. This this might be something appropriate there uh, to honor those two two men. Um, there is a memorial garden in his honor, I believe, that the PTA did establish in the town. That's great. I, you know, I thought I remembered something like that. I don't know how formal that is. Um, whether that's, I, I don't know what that entails right now. I'd love to get up there and take a tour and see that as well. Thank you, Jason. And congratulations to you and the committee for getting this done and for getting it done uh, under budget and under tight circumstances. Thank you. Nancy, do you have anything? Just that, thank you. Thank you, I know it was, uh... It feels like, I don't know, forever ago and a day when we were, were meeting and, and Mr. Quinn was coming before us. So it's it's obviously bittersweet now to hear from you, but certainly glad that you were able to step in and, and appreciate it. So thank you for to you and the committee. Thank you. Thanks for all the support. Well, the town is uh, very appreciative of all the hard work. Uh, building committee work is a lot of work. It is um, sort yes. of a thankless job. P you know, people <clears> hurt <throat> holding parades for building committee members, but they do a lot of hard work and work that um, is important. And um, Mr. Quinn did an admirable job on many building committees. He really dedicated himself and Jason has served as well with honor and integrity and has made sure that the town is getting the best bang for their buck and things are built appropriately. And um, I, I really just wanted to thank you, Jason, for all your hard work. Uh, on this committee, you spent a lot of time and I know you put your heart into it. So thank you sincerely from the, from, from me and from the town of Fairfield. Thank you. Thanks, Jason. So um, I said, um, we, I guess we will um, um, make a motion. I'll ask for a motion uh, to disband the Holland Hill Elementary School Building Committee. So moved. And I will second it. All in favor. Aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. And and Thank thanks you. again, Jason. Really. Thank you so much. More than welcome. And congratulations, I Jason. Welcome. You've been paroled. I look paroled. forward to coming to see uh to seeing the school and you know, maybe we can even who knows, maybe we can go and if this, the PTA doesn't mind, maybe we can I can bring a plant and then we can plant it in the garden. Um because I am a gardener too, you know, so I, I could bring a nice perennial for the garden. I think I could make a call. <laughs> In honor of Tom. All right. Our next item um, is item number eight um, to approve budget meetings for calendar year 2022. So, Board of Selectmen, uh, can I get a motion uh, to approve Board of yes. Selectmen public? Budget hearing dates, February 23rd, 10 a.m., February 24th, 10 a.m., and yes. February 28th for the final budget deliberation, vote, and or, and or public executive session. So moved. Seconded. <clears throat> Is there any uh, questions or anything on that? And the understanding at this point is it's all WebEx still? Yeah, so yeah, it's fine. Um, um, you know, I'll, I'll release more details about the setup and everything uh, to you, but I just wanted to get those dates on your calendar and yeah. make sure that our uh, community is aware of them as well. It, is it possible to put those dates and um, the meeting dates, unless it's already online, um, have Jennifer send this all out as a calendar or? Is oh, absolutely. Yeah, I just wanted, okay. Yeah, we had to make sure we yep. approved it first. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. I do. I, I just. Sure. Absolutely. You know that that'd be really helpful if it went out as a calendar invite that we could just accept. That'd be great. 
Yeah. Okay. I'll make a note. Thank you. Okay. So uh, we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Motion carries unanimously. Um, item number nine to consider an act upon tax refunds as recommended by the tax collector in the amount of 63,386.30. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Seconded. Any questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Nancy, did you a vote? I'm sorry. Yeah. Sorry, oh, sorry if I didn't say it. I thought it. If I didn't say it out I'm loud. sorry. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, okay, item number 10. Um, I'm just going to give a quick update. Um, yesterday, uh, the town uh, distributed 7,200 test kits <coughs> at Roger Ledlow Middle School. Uh, 600 kits were given out per hour. Uh, 7,200 uh, per hour over a three-hour uh, time period, supplying 1,800 households. 2,000 kits were put aside for our schools and some emergency personnel. Uh, the kits were given to us by the state of Connecticut's Department of Management and Homeland Security. Uh, I know we heard a lot about how this uh, kind of went down the week before. We were supposed to get them uh, right before New Year's Eve. We had a statewide conference call with the governor's office, well, the area whole state leaders, and uh, we didn't get them. Then we got a call on Wednesday. They weren't coming. We had set, we were preparing and we had to throw to, you know, work pretty hard to set up a, a, pre, a distribution site. And then we got a call on, I believe it was uh, Friday night or Saturday morning that we were getting them. So we sprang into action and thankfully um, we were able to pull this together. And um, it actually went well, really well. I was there um, with the team and I just want to acknowledge um, the emer our, our Fairfields uh Community Emergency Response Team, sir, and um, is just like knocked it out of the park yesterday. They, I, there were so many of them there. And, and, and in addition to our police and our board of ed and our fire and our health department, I mean, this thing moved. So I know we had traffic. Uh, obviously, there's going to be traffic, but um, it really, really moved very efficiently. They were so amazing, you know. Being there on a Sunday and getting it done on a holiday weekend, um, I, I really was so incredibly grateful for them um, and their hard work. I do want to acknowledge, though, that some of our residents were disappointed uh, that Fairfield only received this limited amount of tests to give out. And I was, however, encouraged that when some of our residents pulled up and said, you know what, I don't need four, just give me two. And so that was very encouraging because, you know, we in an age where everybody wants to get everything for free, even if they don't need it. <laughs> um, there were people who uh, took only what they needed. Um, um, when the state does, if and when the state announces there'll be more tests uh, uh, that they'll be uh, supplying to towns, I will send that information uh, in a newsletter update. And I just want to remind residents for those people who could not get a test yesterday, who are symptomatic and are or have been exposed to a positive case, there are area pharmacies receiving test kits um, all throughout the town. You know, it, it'll be CVS one day, it'll be Rite Aid another day, Walgreens. So there's a ways to get tests. But again, if you can't get a test, uh, we recommend that people stay home if you're not feeling well. I did work with Yale New Haven and uh, had conversations with them before the holiday. Uh, their <laughs> test site on Mill Street and asked that they expand their appointments because they did have extra appointments to fill. So they have done that. And that was starting today. So hopefully I did send that out. Hopefully people will uh, start signing up for those because I know people are very desperate to get tests. Um, we are in the midst of a high transmission rate, but most of the people in our community that I speak to, and I do speak to quite a few, um, that are vaccinated are only experiencing very mild symptoms. Um, our health department continues to advise people to take the necessary precautions, which I don't know anyone who doesn't know what they are at this point, two years in. Um, and you can find, uh, and I'm gonna continue to drum beat if those people who are not vaccinated, please, please think about it and get educated on what the vaccine is. And there are ways to go um, and get vaccinated. And I will just uh, mention uh, that 
people can uh, visit vaccine.gov to find locations to get vaccinated or boosted. Um, uh, on uh, budget season uh, note, I would just say uh, today I've uh, been meeting all day with my um, team and departments to review their proposed budget for the next budgets for the next fiscal year. And we did approve the dates uh, that we will just uh, be having the uh, budget meetings for the Board of Selectmen. And we will post uh, all this information on under the popular links on the town's homepage uh, by the end of this month before our budget meetings. Uh, the fill pile update, I just want to, um, uh, I know that you know, but for our public's uh, consumption, um, in my efforts to provide transparency, I'm holding a virtual presentation for the public to hear an update um, on the ongoing remediation in town as well uh, as a result of, of the fill pile. I have invited Board of Selectmen, Board of Finance and RTM as well as our town's environmental attorney to attend that meeting. Uh, with so many newly elected officials on our boards, I thought it might be helpful to provide some context and a little history and where we are and where we are headed. The presentation will also include a financial update on what we have spent to date and projections to the best of our ability. While site testing continues and remediation is still progressing, uh, the entire issue remains complicated and fluid. Uh, but the, the meeting should be helpful in getting uh, those people who are new uh, to the process uh, updated on where we are. And, and can you remind us when that meeting is? It's Tuesday, January 18th at 6 p.m. And the in WebEx instructions will be included um, on the special board of selected meeting agenda that will be published on the town website this Friday. The Friday before that meeting. So before the, um, the Friday before. So the two end. Fridays, two Fridays. The Friday before the. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, lastly, I just want to say that um, uh, I sent out a newsletter with my uh, year in review uh, last week to highlight the good work of our town employees. We've had a lot of challenges over the last two years. Um, and we've had some in incredible new people come on board with our town, new department he heads and employees who have come with new energy and vision uh, to improve services for our community. And I did highlight uh, to the best of my ability, I could have gone on a lot longer in my newsletter, but I know it was pretty long. <laughs> but I am uh, very, very encouraged by the energy and the, the excitement about uh, making, changing things and modernizing and bringing a different sort of culture to our town government. And I'm just, uh, I'm really proud of the hard work that, that our employees have done and have stepped up, especially during uh, the challenges uh, that we have faced uh, both with COVID and all of the things that happened prior. Um, so uh, if you, if people haven't read it, they can go to the town website and read the uh, update and that's all I have uh, for for um, my update, and I will open it up if either one of you have anything, and I also would open it up to public comment if there's anybody on who would like to provide public comment. Sure, go uh, sure. Ahead. Okay, thank you, and thank you for all of that. Um, and I want to echo the amazing work. And so I want to start by saying something positive, which is all of that. I echo um, what you're saying about, you know, the community and the hard work. And I had read your, um, <clears throat> your update and appreciate what the town employees do and, and how hard people work. But it's also a reminder that um, I guess to empathize, I know there's a lot of frustration and fear and concern and people are like, oh my God, we're still in this. And um, there was a lack of testing available at stores and there was a lot of frustration and and I don't want to minimize that or underestimate it because we are in it too as elected leaders and and as public officials here. Um, but I guess I would want to remind people that we are also experiencing it as public officials and leaders and that we're not immune to feeling the things that that the community is feeling the frustration and the fear and the sadness and and so I would just, you know, in this time of resolutions, remind people that, um, you know, we're not going to agree with everybody here. It's going to be a scary time. It feels uncertain still. It's really frustrating that two years later, we're still in it, but we're all still in it. 
So if people aren't going to agree, um, that's okay. But let's like try to be as supportive of each other as possible because for whatever someone's feeling when they lash out or express concern, there's probably someone on the receiving end of that concern. So, and I say this because I've received some um, pretty strong phone calls, some emails, um, but more people expressing frustration, why not this or that? And, you know, I get it. We all get it, I think. Um, and so I just would encourage people to remember that we're all human beings doing the best we can in a very uncertain time. Um, so I wanted to say that because I think sometimes people forget or lose sight of the fact that we are all human beings in this together, experiencing our own sets of emotions. Um, two of my kids tested positive and we've been doing all the things that we needed to do. And so, and I couldn't get tests and all of that. So, you know, while people were expressing their frustration, I was experiencing it as well. So I say that, um, and, and uh, just wanted to have the opportunity to say to say that I, you know, I do empathize as I think the three of us do with, with everyone's disbelief, concern, frustration, all the emotions. Um, people have asked me, Brenda, separately, side note about, um, and this is something that I know you've been on the receiving end of emails, a mask mandate. Are there any plans to um, talk about that and still it? What's the current thinking at the Board of Health or at the health department level? Can you just talk about that for a minute? Sure. Um, so obviously um, we have received, um, you know, uh, some emails. I would say I, I would say there's probably somewhere in the area of maybe 30 or so people who have asked uh, for a mask mandate. Um, and I actually brought this up with the uh, State Department of Public Health Commissioner on the call on Monday and on Wednesday when we had the statewide call and other leaders did as well. So I asked, you know, there are, there is some people asking for it and I'm, you know, what is, what is the position of our state? And the commissioner of public health said she did not believe that a mandate was necessary at this time. So we, I've been following what uh, public health officials have been asking me, and I, I've had numerous conversations with people, and we have some, you know, like you said, Nancy, um, some, you know, some tough conversations. People's emotions, listen, I have listened to a lot of people over the last two years, and people are, emotions are hot, and I get it. I totally understand, and we've had good conversations, and I've said to people that, I, I understand the angst and the concern and the worry. You know, some someone said to me, I walked into the grocery store, I saw someone in the store without, or a couple people in the store. And I just want to remind everyone, and I said this to individuals on the phone, um, what has been said from the very beginning is you contract COVID, um, direct contact, six feet, within that six feet, no mask, for 15 minutes constant talking, right? So what our contact tracers have said over the past many months is that the majority of our positive cases are not happening when someone goes into a grocery store um, and someone two aisles away doesn't have a mask on. It's coming from Thanksgiving events, holiday parties, dinner parties, uh, kids having parties at their houses or just you know getting together with one another. Um, that's where this thing uh, is really spreading. And so, uh, again, I, I try to remind people that um, to take care of yourself. And I, and I, I know people feel that if a mask mandate ha is on, all of a sudden the transmission rate is going to go down dramatically. And that's not what we're hearing from public health officials. And I keep trying to remind residents in our town that I am not a public health official. I take the guidance of public health officials. So I tell people, if you feel uncomfortable, if you walk into a store and there are people in there without masks on um, and you don't feel comfortable, that you have a right to leave that store and go to a different store. Um, but we're not seeing a high transmission rate from going in and out of a grocery store or a retail store. These, uh, the trans, they're primarily coming from um, exposure either at a house party or, or dinner, get togethers and things of that nature. Um, our health department is continuous to, continuing to say that you should, if you have concerns, 
if you're not, especially if you're not vaccinated, because you're way more vulnerable if you're not vaccinated, getting really sick. 80% of the people in our hospitals with COVID are unvaccinated. And people who are vaccinated primarily have mild symptoms. We ask people if you're not feeling well, and it's a weird thing, you could just have allergies and you think you just have allergies. And it could be COVID because you're vaccinated. So you then are um, susceptible to being contagious. So we're just continuing to push this information out in the newsletter. Obviously, it's all over the news. You can't, I mean, can't get away from it. Um, we all know what we need to do. Wash our hands. Take care of yourself. If you're not feeling well, stay away from other people um, and make sure you're not exposing. And uh, as Sans has said, uh, in South Africa, where this, this variant started, it's starting to plateau, it's starting to go down. So we're at a high transmission rate now, and hopefully it will start to curve off and go down. And everyone should take the necessary precautions to protect themselves and their families. So I want to- um, Appreciate that, thank you. Thank you, yep. Nancy. And can I just, um, I just want to follow up on what Nancy was saying. You know, I appreciate you making those comments about there's human beings on the other side of these conversations. And, you know, Nancy, I've said this repeatedly over the last two years about the, you know, sort of vitriol that happens on so, social media and things. And people get, I, I know people are very, um, everybody is here. Everybody. It, it, it's so stressful um, and, it, and it's difficult. We're not, we're not back to normal. And we, we got a taste of normal, <laughs> kind of came a little there. And then it was like, and so everyone is feeling uh, stressed out. And so I, I get it. And I, I appreciate you taking the time to say that because I, I think not all of us have to understand um, that we are feeling, all of us are feeling a level of frustration, but that on the other side of the aisle, the other side of the person you're speaking to is a human being and that we should always treat each other with respect, um, regardless of having differences of opinion. So, so I, I think you talking about that. Yeah, a couple things here. First of all, Brenda, thanks for the update, both now and thanks for the year end update. It was uh, quite good. So thanks for that. Um, in terms of Nancy's commentary, I couldn't agree more. I think and, and Brenda, you followed up on it. I, I hope um, that it goes away when COVID subsides. M my fear is whether it will or not. There's a lot of, um, there's a lot that can come through a keyboard. Uh, that's a lot easier than saying to somebody's face or, or um, communicating in a respectful way. And I think we do have to realize that. And it's always a good thought, <clears throat> whether it be you're a public official, whether it be you're just a member of a public, uh, to wait a few minutes to send that email or post that comment <clears throat> until you calm down. You know, there's way too often that those comments uh, get a little bit too personal and or they ascribe motive uh, to something as opposed to facts and reason and logic. And I think that's something we can all uh, agree on um, and, and try to do better at. And so I, I think that Brendan, your position in the position of the health authorities, particularly our local health authorities, uh, they're doing the best they can with imperfect information and with an evolving process. And I think sometimes people are just as confused at that level as they are in the, in the general public with some of the guidance that comes across from the, the quote unquote professionals uh, that are giving us um, counsel on the virus. So thank you. Thank you. Um, if there is, um... <clears throat> Nothing further. Thank you both. Um, I'm going to ask for a motion uh, from one of you to go into executive session. I'll make that motion. Pending litigation, Monroe um, R E L L C uh, at all versus Town of Fairfield with Town Attorney Jim Baldwin. And so yeah, and, I'll, and I'll second it. All in favor? And Madam Woman, if I may, um, Attorney Douglas Varga. Yeah, I was just going to say, and Attorney Douglas Vargas. Thank Varga. you. Thank you. Yeah, uh, so, all second. In all in favor? Aye. 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 Muted. Okay, um, uh, can I get a motion to come out of executive session? So moved. I second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. 
I just want to announce uh, for the public that um, no votes were taken. Uh, we just had an update on the pending um, litigation and no votes are scheduled to take place at this time. Motion to adjourn, Madam First Select Woman. Second it. All in favor. Aye. 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 Good night, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, have everybody. A, have a good Thanks. night. You that uh, Jerry Spino said that Altis is having some issue with her audio on channel 79. That's creating static and other audio issues. So I would uh, recommend any Altis customers to live stream.